Greetings! In this video we are going to be taking a look at the DC Multiverse Hush. This is Todd's mainline release of the figure from the 2-pack that was poorly received. It is based off of the early 2000s Hush comic with its art being created by one of the industry's best comic artists, Jim Lee. This exact design comes from a few panels in the comic where Hush was drawn with his coat closed up, as opposed to the rest of the comic where we get to see his actual costume. But before we get to the figure itself, Hush comes packaged in a standard DC Multiverse window box, name on the front, name and comic on the left, name on the right, words and legal on the bottom, and on the back of the box we have the image of what will be the card artwork. Zero out of five, I despise this. It's one of those 3D renders that that just looks awful. Who thought this shit would be a good idea? At the very least, why not maybe use this? Feels like it would be the obvious choice, and guess what? It would actually look good. And here we have Hush standing before us, and I gotta say, even after months of owning this guy, I'm still kinda disappointed. Now to give credit where it's due, the design they were going off of was replicated here perfectly. The disappointment comes from their choice of design. I and many others would have much rather had this than what I'm looking at right now. I guess it just feels like this guy is kinda lazy. But the actual sculpting on this figure is great as usual. The coat has a lot of folds and details making the windswept bottom look natural. It even has some nice old leather texturing on it. However, I don't know about you, but I feel this would have looked better in a darker color. Oddly enough, similar to the 3D render. I'm genuinely surprised by how well his necklace medallion was painted. Though I would have preferred brown gloves, the legs beneath the coat look great, with plenty of sculpted detail including some nice looking knee pads. I also really like how they sculpted the bottom of his boots. But unfortunately my praise for the sculpt work gets hampered by my criticism for this severe lack of paint. I mean if you're going to make this your hush design, then at least make it worth it. Details picked out on the coat, some dry brushing in the folds, a wash, something, anything for me to care about. But it's not there. There was clearly a lot of effort put into the sculpting of the coat, which is obviously the centerpiece of this figure. Concerning the fact that the only real paint used here is on the head, not even on the neck, and knives, we'll talk about them later, I think there was probably more than enough budget for some added paint here. What blow all the paint budget on the digital render? But while we're here, the head does look great. The bandages are sculpted to perfection, and although the eyes look a little animated in comparison, I think it actually looks good. The mouth as well was picked out nicely, and I gotta say, although maybe a little limiting, I do like this expression. They even sculpted nostrils in the bandages. Amazing! But once you zoom out, disappointment. At the very least, this guy does have some very solid joints, but due to the coat, you'll probably think he's not much more than a glorified brick. Well, see for yourself. Articulation-wise, Hush has a very expressive dumbbell joint at the head, can get a lot of movement and that jacket collar moves out of the way. Internal ball joint at the shoulder allows for some shifting action, as well as rotation and an internal hinge allows it to move outward. Pretty well hidden bicep cut. Double jointed elbow bend that can get pretty well all the way and the cuts look pretty good pretty clean not too floaty McFarlane wrist balls that can rotate and tilt and they are kind of sculpted it works he has a double ball jointed waist and abdomen however they are fairly limited thanks to the coat he can kind of squeeze in get a crunch but he doesn't really hold it surprisingly enough he can actually kind of hold an arc of course tilt as well as rotation beneath the coat he has McFarlane hips that can kick forward that far back that far can do this full splits on a very nice click gets quite a bit of rotation Double jointed knees with pretty good knee cuts. Sculpted McFarlane ankle balls that can rotate, pivot, as well as move up and down. And a toe bend. 
Even with a plastic coat covering the entire body, I'm happy to say that the articulation here is good. Nothing too crazy for a multiverse figure, but even with its flexibility, the coat does hinder some movement. However, other pieces like his shoulders and head can be very expressive. Of course, he pales in comparison to other DC multiverse figures, but considering the natural hindrance of his design, his articulation remains impressive. Additionally, he also comes with a few accessories, the first being an oval figure stand, the second being his shitty collector's card. But hey, there is a description on the back if you would like to know more about Thomas Elliot. And lastly, a pair of knives that look pretty good. Fits nicely into his hand, but considering the fact that Hush's main weapons are a pair of handguns, this is a little disappointing. Granted, if you own the McFarlane Munitions Pack, there are a nice pair of 1911 handguns, I think that's what they are, that are practically made for him considering how nicely they fit into his hands. Looks great and really completes him. Size-wise, Hush stands in at around 7 inches tall, making him average height for a McFarlane figure. Here he is next to Dawnbreaker, Batman, Joker, Red Robin, Superman, Captain Rex, and Optimus Prime for a sense of general scale. Overall, this figure is decent. His accessories leave a lot to be desired, his card isn't good, and frankly the design choice could have been better, as well as the execution. A figure that should have been a home run for many simply ends as a disappointment that Todd released twice. The knives are fine and I understand why, but it still kinda sucks that we have to buy a weapon pack in order to make our figures feel complete. Though to clarify this complaint is not targeted towards McFarlane. This is for Warner Brothers who won't even let a hundred dollar Reveltech figure have guns. However, as per usual, I do like to give credit where it's due. The head looks phenomenal, the articulation is surprisingly good, and he makes great custom fodder. If you haven't seen some of the custom hushes out there, then you're missing out. Granted, they also make you even more disappointed seeing what we could have gotten versus what we actually got. Fuck, there really is no winning here, is there? Before I depress myself, let's end this video. So that pretty much covers it for this review. I hope you enjoyed my spiral, and if you did, you can watch more of my content linked in the description down below. If you'd like to help me further, feel free to engage and help this video be seen by more people. Of course, should you feel so inclined, subscribe! You'll be helping my channel grow and possibly pulling me back from this spiral of buyer's remorse. With that, I hope you have a great week and I'll see you in the next one. After much negotiation, we've obtained the rights to sell Diaclone figures here in North America. We've already started the conversion process and adding these figures into our Transformers line, but we're still stumped on this one. Today I introduce Trailbreaker, but as cool as he looks, we need to make him different from his Diaclone release. Does anyone have any ideas? We make him black. What? We make him black, sir. You mean to tell me after all the redesigns and additions and brand new color schemes we should just make this one black? Yes. Someone get this man a raise. Or at least that's how I imagine Hasbro making Trailbreaker out of this.